Hi everyone, uh, another another day in the in the lockdown cabin here. Uh, I've, fantastic! I've got uh, someone you're really going to enjoy listening to join me today, uh, Mike Sanderson, who really needs no introduction. CEO of Doyle Sales and uh, and obviously former winner of the Ocean Race. And Mike and I actually uh, sailed transatlantic way back. Uh, he probably can remember in 2004, he was with the Pindar team in a, a pretty powerful uh, Open 60 and, and went on to, to, to almost win the Transat and I think was his first solo race. So he's um, he sat there in the green room and I'm just going to bring him in. Uh, so um, there he is over in New Zealand. It's yep. early morning, Mike. You've just been out for a run. Yeah, mor yeah morning, Conrad. Yeah, lovely to be here. And um, yeah, it's just it, it's it's just an amazing time to be watching the Vendée Globe. That's for sure. It, isn't it just? I mean, I I guess like everybody else, you've been sort of not just hooked into you know the conditions they've been having out there, but of course you've been working with uh, with Alex for a long time now and. This morning he's in the front. You know how how's how's he going? Ah, uh, I mean, it, Alex is doing an amazing job, and you know we, um, uh, my wife uh, was Emma Richards, and so between us two, we've you know we've been able to have some amazing conversations. Um, and I remember at the end of the last fun day looking we looked at each other and wondered what we were going to do with it with the time uh, now that the Vonda had finished so now it's an exciting time now i mean alex is doing an amazing job um i mean all the the uh the boats are incredibly close um so that you know the whole fleet is is working hard um you know that the conditions are, are far from straightforward aren't they so um i think you know the, the there's, a, there's probably a huge um, amount of caution going on in the fleet with everyone, um, you, you know, pushing as hard as they think they can get away with to, to stay in touch. And that'll be the bottom line, um, especially for the foilers. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, they've Alex, got to look. He certainly seems to have just, you know, played it, you know, smart, you know, nothing. Not the old Alex, maybe of before, where he would have gone out ripping and <laughs> punched through the front, you know, and uh, slapped a few <laughs> things on the arse as he went past. But yeah. you know, he he he's been, you know, they've all been very tight, they've all been very close, um, and uh, you know, he's picked his way really nicely through a difficult series of transitions. Um, I'm interested to to find out a little bit more with talking to you about the sail program um, and uh, particularly the sails on these Amoka boats because you know they, they don't have many sail options in their quiver, but I guess they must have had every sail out in this last four four days. Yeah, so I mean that you know look, as the boats get faster and faster, you, you know, in design, I mean they. That it's 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 reasonably, I guess it's almost simplified the 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 deal from from back in our day of 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 you know needing something for all conditions. You know now the boats are almost in two mode. They're either looking for power and they're looking to get foiling, um, or they're really in a low drag. Let's get rid of you know let's get little sails on. Um, and get the thing up and ripping, and and it'll you know it'll just do its thing. So um, yeah, in some ways the sales have got have got easier. Um, you know, from a um, complex, you, you know, from a, um, a, a a suit of sales standpoint. Yeah. But um, they've also got you know incredibly finessed, if you like, in the concept and. And you know, Alex has been working very hard for a long time. I mean, to be honest, the, the evolution has been going on with Alex's um, sale program, and you know, he's been working very hard with with Neil McDonald uh, and Richard Buzade in this last campaign. And um, you know, the great thing about Alex is he really knows what he wants. Yeah. And he and. You, you know, it's one, it's the hardest people for us to make sales for are people that don't, you know, don't know what they want. Yeah. And Alex really knows what he wants. And he then 
he knows what he wants and he also is very clear um you know views on how he's going to sail the boat and then we can make sure that we're um that richard in particular is designing sails for how he's going to sail the boat and that's probably the key to as these relationships grow between a mocker 60 sailors and and you know and their sail makers incredible so what what i think we'll do is have a well, let's have a quick look at what happened over the last um 24 hours um on the tracker and maybe as we go through uh, some of the, the, the transitions, you can perhaps talk a little bit about what, you know, he might have up, um, what sort of sales, um, you know, he's, he's perhaps picking his way through. And uh, there's been this sort of split between him and the lead bunch because they were all close together. And he jived off, I think, a little bit earlier, um, went in towards this small little low pressure. And, uh, you know, you know, it'd be interesting to know, you know, he's obviously got, you know, has found some some uh, some pace down there, maybe a little bit more pressure. The other guys didn't go with him. And um, and that's, you know, quite interesting. Yep. Maybe a different sales setup. So I'll just just go on to this one. So hopefully you'll you can still see that it's probably a little small, but um, that this was sort of uh, lunchtime yesterday. Um, they just come through the uh the system and it through the through the front and they're sort of negotiating around this 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 fairly chunky high pressure ridge uh and then we've got this little depression down in the south now this is where alex um jibes and opts to split from from the guys what are you um what are you sort of seeing here and you know what's he doing differently why is why do you think they've they've carried on sort of more into perhaps into the lighter breeze, but around this low? What what do you think uh, is going on there, Mike? Well, I think you know um, Alex is very fast in that you know in that moderate and you know in those moderate conditions, and so you know as as you know well, the, the, this race is about how you know how you this period of the race is 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 very much about how many down the ladder rungs you can get uh, from a southing standpoint um, without giving away too much, too much westing. And, you know, for me, Alex just made a really, you know, nice uh, jump down a ladder rung there on the guys. You know, you could see from his heading, he was basically heading due south. Yeah. And if you can do that at zero cost on your westing, if you like, then then that's a that's a very nice gain. Um, also, as we can see, as you've played it for there, you know, he's able to do that at very low risk of dropping out of any pressure. In fact, you can argue that, it, you know, as we're seeing here, he's going to stay in the pressure longer. Um, and so I, I would imagine that this is going to be a pretty nice, you know, pretty nice period for him. Um, the interesting thing from the footage off the boat from his overhead camera, if anyone's seen that on this website, is, you know, they're in a really um, nasty little sea state, um, which is not, you know, unusual for, for what they're just going through. And so they're not really in full foiling mode. You know, he's going over one and under one. Um, and so it's ridiculously wet. But... Um, yeah, he's done a nice, he, you know, he's done a nice job of step of stepping down a ladder rung. Would be my description of that. Okay, okay, great. Well, let's have a quick look at uh, the routing. Um, this is just a generic polar um, in uh, in expedition, but it gives us an idea of um, of what's coming up. So I might uh, I might stop this just sort of around about here. Um, in fact, let's go back a little bit. So the big, the big depression that they're, they're coming into here is, uh, is Tropical Storm Theta and, uh, and making sure they're, they're lining themselves up to go through. Uh, and the last sort of few hours, um, most people have now jibed uh, and, and are tracking south. And the routing here takes us um, pretty close actually to the to the center of the of the system 
And in fact, I was having a little look at the satellite picture earlier today. Um, so this is how it was at, at eight, eight o'clock this morning. What, uh, I mean, you've, you've been through some pretty heavy conditions. Do you think they're, they're, they're wise to kind of tackle this head on and just get close through it and, and through the other side? Or, or should they be a little bit more conservative with this system? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the 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 forecasting is very good in this in this part of the world, you know, and um, I think that you know they're going to have they're going to have very refined polars on on, um, and so we might find that their tracking is 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 a is quite a bit more conservative than this generic one um just because you know obviously you know these boats are capable especially the foilers again are capable of such high speeds if they can get into into you know flatter water and and 20 to 25 knots if they get 40 knots they're all slowing down again even if it's downwind probably so so we you know it um yeah, even though you know this generic polar probably has us doing forty knots and forty knots of wind, um, there's a good chance the guy's router will be seeking less breeze than this router is, yeah. and um, and you know often uh, you know obviously everyone goes through and knocks their polars down quite considerably in the windy stuff and sub and also in in the very light airs as well, just in the search for more. For more perfect conditions because we all know the boats are capable of of sailing closer to 100 percent and that stuff yeah so i would expect them to to give this a little bit wider berth um than that may not not really out of fear of it but out of poten uh speed potential yeah yeah okay well it uh it is uh it is friday the 13th so let's tomorrow morning yeah. <laughs> so let's uh let's hope that we don't have any more breakages uh, on a day like today. Certainly, I wouldn't want to be tackling the, the centre of that uh, system. I was chatting to Mike Golding, and uh, and he said he's going to go straight through the middle of it on his virtual programme with a cup of tea in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mate. But, um, OK, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's brilliant. I'm going to have a quick look at the forecast ahead now. Um, and uh, it'd be useful just to kind of get your thoughts on what 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 comes now after theta because um the whole fleet are, are quite a lot further west than perhaps they would have traditionally been in a normal um program they would have perhaps gone through maybe even quite close to the canaries and then looking to get um maybe outside west of the um, the cape verde islands but obviously right now they're you know they're a long way west um if we if we watch the forecasts um, through, I'll just scroll through the next twenty-four hours. Um, what 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 do you think they should be looking at now? I mean, it looks like the the Azores High uh, is starting to reform um, and should give them some trade wind sailing down to the doldrums. But you know, is it a problem that they're this far west at this stage? Well, I mean, obviously, it was you know it was vital that they went round the, the 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 right side of that depression. So that's a that's a pretty you know that was almost more significant than the TSS zone, and and so you know that but that that storm's been sitting out there for a while, and and the and the meteorologists and the navigators you know and in 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 Alex Thompson's case pre race he Andrew Cape obviously you know, world renowned um top navigator, um who's you know, multiple ocean races under his belt, etc. You know, so so they will have been strategizing, just to use his example on this for days. And each day leading up to the start, they would have been running scenarios and having conversations about, okay, well, you know, once we know where where our road around this is um you, you know now their next their next obstacle if you like or challenge really is going to be setting up for for where they believe then their uh, best um 
pass through the doldrums is. So this is a pretty important phase um, where they where they'll want to get their um, you know their longitude you know or that you know the 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 gate where they want to 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 hit uh, their doldrums passage um, you know where they wanted to enter the doldrums is is very pivotal next phase and that's what they'll be working towards now. I'm 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 guessing uh, looking looking at that that in in the past where if you'd have been you know perhaps on set up on the eastern side of the Atlantic you know you're 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 hunting looking for the your crossing point and you're perhaps putting in some jibes but you don't really want to necessarily do so you're soaking down to try and here you know they've got some some room to come up um if they want to and and, and probably accelerate um if they're already got that westing in so maybe it's not sort of such a bad option for them no you know 100 percent. and even as we look at the you know, as we as we look at this weather map, you know, there's some, you know, you can you can see clearly that there are some some better uh, gateways through the doldrums there. So, you know, they'll they'll be watching those very closely. Um, you know, anyone that can punch through that zone, of course, we all know, can be hundreds of miles. Um, but you know, there's a good chance we're in for some pretty fast sailing coming up. Um, just because again, these boats are only, you know, they only need, you know, whatever it is, 14, 15 knots to, to start popping out on, on the foils. And, um, you know, the, the sea state should be reasonably, you know, starting to settle down for them. And, you know, it could be, we, we could see our first true lineup between these front runners, um, as to who's got, who's got the, who's got wheels. That's for sure. Yeah, they should be getting their their ideal conditions. That's 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 just gonna be brilliant. I mean, it it's been an incredible opening week. So much drama, obviously, real challenge for Shirel and uh, and for Ossetane. You know, shame to see that boat in particular because uh, she looked pretty interesting um, in terms of her design. But um, but there's there's so much to these foiling boats. I know we're all going to be rooting for Alex um, this time uh, four years ago he was also you know taking the front run and opened up a, a pretty healthy lead before breaking his foil um, I was just sort of looking at last four year track and thinking you know very different from this this year um, so uh, just before we close Mike uh, what's uh, what's next for you I know you're doing some cherub sailing <laughs> Um, you're probably yeah. uh, doing some some big maxi sailing. Have you got anything uh, coming up in the in the near future? Yeah, I mean, still very very busy in the world of Balamente, the maxi seventy two, and um, so yes, uh, Hap Hap Falth, the owner, is uh, one of the principals of American Magic, and um, so of course we you know we've got the America's Cup down in in New Zealand this, you know, this summer, um, quite, quite a different event to what we all had been, had hoped for and planned for, for the, you know, for the last four years. Um, not, not from the team's racing standpoint. I mean, they that's going to be really exciting because, you know, due to COVID, they haven't, they haven't lined up or raced yet. So they're straight into this Christmas cup at the end, you know, towards the end of next month. Yeah. Um, and then, and then we're into it. So, um, you know, you know, it's an exciting time. We just obviously none of the super yachts um, or the J class, et cetera, have been able to get here. Um, but, you know, there's no doubt, you know, we're, we've just seen what New Zealand's turned on with with super rugby and and with Bledisloe Cup uh, rugby games. And, you know, the the people are just dying to get out and watch things. So as I tell all our international, you know, America's Cup, teams you know i think uh new zealand's going to put on a great spectacle um you know for the cup and and so we've got plenty of activity there um Fantastic. and we've had some fun being out there in the cherub with my son merrick um who's just turned 11 and 
and we've had a couple of good photo ops with the cup boats ripping around. But the cherub <laughs> suddenly feels very small when a cup boat comes past you at 40 plus knots, you know? Oh dear, you know, as, as we were talking earlier about, you know, motivating our, our children, our kids are quite similar ages and, and uh, yes. they're saying, well, you know, my, my, my motivation for my daughter is going out on an 18th century old wooden open launch doing four knots and you're <laughs> ripping around at the yeah. other end of the scale. I think I probably need to get, get my yeah, priorities changed. No, it's, <laughs> it's a, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be amazing to show you, you know, the, the world to see how fast these America's cup boats are. And w you're almost going to need something to show the relativity just to give you an idea, we were out in, in, in our work, eight and a half metre protector with, you know, twin 150s on the back and I had the, with the family on board and w we knew that Prada was about to bear away and get going. So we went, um, we went four or five seconds early, put the hammer down and flat water. We were doing 39, 40, just, just under 40 knots and they came past us like we were tied to the dock. So if we, you know, with the ever, everyone hanging on. So, I mean, it's it's unbelievable the pace these guys are ripping around out here. It really is unbelievable. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, come on. I can't wait to, can't wait to see it. Um, yeah. Right. Well, we, we pretty much uh, kicked, uh, kicked that one. That was brilliant, Mike. Really good to catch up. Um, not just, you know, for this, but also on a personal level. Uh, Lovely to, uh, to to hear all the family are well. And, no, uh, and, no yeah. well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's uh, it's very cool, you know, and I, I think, um, although I, I'm not envious of them being out there, and the, I mean, it would be every now and then I have a hint of it, but... Um, <laughs> But oh, it just—it's just such a cool thing, and it's—it's uh, it's sad for Jeremy, but it's an amazing opportunity for Alex. I mean, there's this. Don't get me wrong. There's still lots of very good boats and strong teams, and some very amazing yachties out there. And that you know, they're just looking at the caliber of the of the CVs, you know, of these Figaro guys and what they've done and stuff. Yeah. It's um, you know, it's it's impressive, man. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great time. It's a great time. We're, yeah, we've we've got our fingers sort of riding mm. on Ben for the America's Cup and Alex for the yeah. Bond Day. It could be a a, a a British season of, of, of banter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wish you well for half of that. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Mike. Thanks a lot. Um, and. Uh, uh, yeah. Catch yeah, listen, um, yeah, hi to the family from Emma and I, and and do let me know if I can, um, you know, help with anything, and, and but maybe even more importantly in Cherub World, do uh, let me know if, we, if, if I can in, entice you into building a Cherub in the UK. There's one being built in Palmer. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, yeah, um, Cam Marshall, who's one of the boat captains of SLED, the 52, is is building one in Palmer. So um no, it's all go. <laughs> all right. You're on. You're on. Yeah. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Catch Lovely to catch up. Congratulations on your show. It's I I'm not just saying that. It's my go to every morning to get this wrap up. So, you know, I think it's it's very well done and and you know, yeah, well yeah, nice work for taking it on. It's just to be honest, it's just what everyone needs is is to be talked through it, and um, yeah, very cool, mate. Well done. Good. good. Well, uh, let's, we'll we'll see. We've got we've got a, quite a few um, interview interviews lined up for next week, so uh, yeah, yeah, we'll just see how we go. But uh, it's when the uh, race is this this uh, intriguing, it's pretty easy to find people who want to talk about it. So um, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. But don't don't underestimate. You know, just just you just. You, you know of you know having you be able to talk you, you know have all the stuff lined up and and show people the weather and the routing and what's happened and your and you know you having done the work with your knowledge base it is going to end up with a huge following in my opinion because right. um you know because that's what everyone wants as a as a you know five or ten minute 
catch up um, from from someone educated. So it's uh, it's it's awesome, mate. Well done. Good, good. All yeah. right. Well, uh, very cool. I'll let you get soon. to bed. Yeah, no worries. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye. Cheers, comrade. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. So, uh, well, fascinating talking to Mike as ever. Um, you know what? Uh, he's so in integral uh, with the whole Doyle Sale program with Alex's team, and of course, you know, today's the day when Alex took the lead. Let's um, let's hope he stays there. I'm just going to very quickly uh, check on um, on virtual regatta because uh, we all, you know, are pushing south. Um, so, uh, and I just wanted to make sure Mike Golding hasn't uh, jibed as yet because he was uh, he was really close to me for the afternoon. In fact, I, I thought he was um, he was covering me. Uh, so if I just quickly get through this. Um, oh, yeah. OK, so I've jived. That's good to know. I must have set that up. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what Mike's done. Oh, OK. So Mike, Mike has also jived. Um, let's just scroll out a little bit. So we're um, we're over here. Here's uh, here's the uh, Azores. You know we're we're a long way west. Um, this is this is Mike just here. So uh, I went just before him. But we've got good company. We've got Vincent Rue here. We've got uh, down in the the bottom here. We've we've got um, Francois Gabar and Loic Perron. Um, we're obviously all lining up ourselves for for the big breeze. Uh, that's going to come in at six, seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, and I'm going to try and get hold of Mike because uh, he said he's going to go right through the centre of that storm with uh, a cup of tea in his hand. So we we'll look forward to that. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.